Hi, Paul Thompson with Werner Electric Supply here to tell you how to set up the Kinetics 5100 servo drive for use with the add-on instructions in Studio 5000. Before we get started, there's a few things that you'll need to have. Uh, the add-on instructions themselves, the add-on profile if you're using Studio V30, 31, or 32. If you have 33 or later, it's already loaded in there. And the final thing will be the Kinetics 5100C software. So these are all available on Rockwell's website via the Product Compatibility and Download Center. You can get your add-on instructions, add-on profile, as well as the software right through here. You'll add those all to the download cart and proceed through the download steps in order to get all of those. For the sake of time, I already have downloaded those files and installed the Kinetics 5100C software in the add-on profile. The next step is going to be to launch my Kinetics 5100C software. I have to give my project a name. And in this case, my Kinetics 5100 is powered up and I have the USB connection already established. So it automatically can tell that I'm connected to COM12 in this case. I'll say add. If I just wanna go online with the drive, I can choose to either upload or download or do a compare. In this case, I'm just gonna upload what I've already got loaded in the drive. And really to get this working with the add-on instructions in Studio 5000, there's really only a couple of things that we have to set. One of them is we need the drive to be at an IP address that we know. In this case, mine is set to 192.168.1.1. And the second thing that we need to have is we need to have the mode setting correct for the drive. To do the add-on instructions, we want the operation mode set to IO. So if you're doing, you know, pulse and direction or following a velocity signal, you would set that up here. But in this case, we want it set to IO so we can use the add-on instructions. Those two changes here in the Kinetics 5100C software are really the, the main things that need to be set up in order for this drive to work with the add-on instructions in the Studio 5000. So once we've got that taken care of, the next thing to do is to create a project in Studio 5000. So if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and create a blank project for the controller that you're going to be using. I already have set one up here for the PLC that I've got for this demo today. The other thing I've done besides just set up the project is I've gone ahead and loaded in the add-on instructions and the user-defined data types that came in that add-on instruction download from the Product Compatibility Download Center. So if you haven't done that yet, all you have to do is just right click the add-on instruction folder, say import. And if you point it to the add-on instruction folder, you can grab any of those add-on instructions. In this case, I haven't already loaded this one, so I'll just pull this in just so you can see the procedure. Nothing fancy, you just kind of have to give all of the okays, all the green lights, and it will bring all those instructions in. Now, you can bring them all in. You can bring in just the ones that you're gonna need as far as the instructions go. For the data types, you do need to bring in the three data types. There's an input assembly, an output assembly, and then an overarching assembly that's basically made up of those two parts. Uh, if you're familiar with doing integrated motion, you can kind of think of this as your axis when we create a tag of this assembly type. And then that axis is going to link to the drive that we need to add in down on our ethernet network. So I already loaded that add-on profile that I showed you where to go to download before, but if you haven't loaded that AOP, you'll need to do that as well. And once you've done that, you can go to your ethernet network or your ethernet card, whatever you've got in your IO tree where you're gonna be able to add your ethernet device and search for 2198-E. That's gonna show you all the Kinetics 5100 drives. In my case, I've got an E1004. I'm gonna hit create. I'm gonna call this K5100 drive. And again, the IP address I had set in it per the 5100 tool is .65. Once I've got that added in there, I'm gonna hit okay. And 
that's really all the setup that I need to do for the device down in the I.O. tree. There's not a whole lot else to change in there. You can feel free to go through those settings. And if you wanted to change the RPI or anything like that, you could, but I'm gonna leave everything at the default in this example. Now you'll see here in my controller tags, it's added in the input and output tag structure for the drive. I do need to create an instance of this K5100 assembly to accompany that. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right away before I forget. So I'm gonna call this one K5100 Axis. And again, you could really call this whatever you want. Just make sure that it's of the data type RAC underscore UDT device K5100 assembly. And we'll see that once I create that, it has the input and the output assembly built in. So I have everything added in my tree that I need. I've got the tags that I need right now. The next thing I need to do is I need to start writing some logic. As far as the logic goes, we'll be using the add-on instructions that we loaded in, but there are a couple more pieces that we need to add in here to make everything work. Uh, really, the, the main thing that we need to add in addition to the add-on instructions is a pair of synchronous copy instructions or a CPS. So I'll go ahead and show you how the first one's gonna be added in here. You can just type in a CPS instruction. And this first CPS is gonna take the input file from the drive and load it into the access. So the source is gonna be the K5100 drive input file. We are going to move that to the K5100 access input link is one. And this is just following the procedure outlined in the Kinetics 5100 user manual. So if you have any questions or you want to double check something, there is an example of doing essentially the same thing right in the Kinetics 5100 user manual as well. So we're going to put that above all the motion logic that we're going to be doing. We'll add our logic in the middle. I'm going to just write the final CPS for the output file while I'm at it. And in this case, we're taking the K5100 axis dot output, bringing that to the K5100 drive output file. Length is again, just one. So essentially what that does is this access, we're gonna be using that to link to all of our add-on instructions. And then those CPS instructions just take the information from that access and either bring the information from the drive into it or at the end of the logic, it takes the information from that access and puts it out to the drive in the IO tree. So there's a number of add-on instructions. I'm not gonna go through each and every one of them in this video, but I will just show some of the basic ones. I have my add-on folder up here that I'm looking at and I'm gonna start off with just a basic motion servo on. And examine of close in front of that. And I'll kind of take that same structure and run with it. I'll have an on and off, a jog, a stop, maybe a fault reset. And that'll be good for the sake of this demonstration. So I'll make a bool here. I can toggle this on. And this first piece that we have to enter in here on the motion servo on block is kind of like using a, a motion instruction tag. There's a specific one for each one of these blocks. But if I just type in, say, K5100 on, for instance, this is an example of a tag name. And make a new one, you'll see that the data type is pre-populated by creating it on that MSO block. It knows what that data type needs to be. I say create, and then the reference axis is going to be that K5100 axis. And we're essentially gonna do a similar thing with the rest of these rungs.
create that K5100 octave. And before I forget, I actually want to change that instruction to the MSF. You could drag and drop those down as well. That one. Make this my jog. And now as far as the speed reference and Excel reference, this is outlined in the user manual uh, in the 2198-UM004. You'll be able to find this on page 470. They give an example of this. But the units that you'll be entering in are the speed that we want to move at in increments of 0.1 RPM. So in this case, I might just add in, say, 550. And an XL D cell reference, the range for that is, again, from the user manual, anywhere from 458 to 30 million is the range. So I'm gonna put in 10,000 for both of those. And those units are 0.1 RPM per second per second for the acceleration. After that, I'm gonna do motion axis stop instruction. Call it K5100 stop axis. Move that tag before I forget. And for set D cell reference again. Ten thousand. Make my dual over here for stop. And then the final rung. I will make a fault reset. Change that block before I forget. Okay. And there we go. We've got the CPS instructions to get everything in and out of the tag structure. And on and off, jog, stop, and a fault reset. And you could add in moves or any of the other instructions that you need. But this would be kind of the bare minimum just to get this thing up and moving. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my Who Active, make sure I've got a good project path set, and download my project. So this will take a minute to go through and do the download, but once we get everything into the controller and get it back in run mode, then we'll be able to go in here and enable the servo drive, disable it, jog it, stop it, and if there were a fault were to come up, we'd have the ability to reset that fault based on the logic that we've got entered in here now. All right, so our download is complete. My IO OK light, is solid green, that's a good sign. I drive down here, says it's running, which means we're up, we're communicating. And if I come to my motion servo on, give that a toggle, looks like it took effect and the motor's enabled. You don't need to hold that bit on. Once it's got a motion servo on, it'll stay on until you turn it off or it 
faults out or it loses power, any of those scenarios. Once I've got that, the next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and give it a jog. And we can see it's moving. Next thing I'll do is I'll give it a stop. And you can see that the axis is stopped. Relatively straightforward example, but it just kind of gives you the building blocks of how to fit this all together. The other thing, I'll just turn that off real quick. But you can go ahead and you can use the same type of uh, setup to do moves. If you just need to do basic indexing from point to point, or if you're trying to do more advanced motion, you just have to use the right instructions and write your logic and you follow the same principles that we outline here in this video. If you have any other questions or you'd like to learn more, feel free to contact me or your Warner Electric Supply account manager. Thank you.